Now we are. What's up, everybody? It's a me, uh, uh, our DeVille. We missed uh, my Luigi last night, but uh, instead I had to have a, I had to call in a friend to come in and join us on the reading last night. We end up getting uh, Professor yeah. Pixel. I need to go back and watch that. I'm sorry I missed that. I was, I had my, I was, I was ready to be Luigi too. Maybe next time. Oh my gosh, we might we're, we're, we're discussing we might do it for another reading for next Monday, either another another Super Mario Brothers, we might do Legend of Zelda. They, Legend they did, of Zelda. Yeah, from 1993. Was Link even talking that? It, yeah, in the in the early comic books from the Nintendo Power Comics magazines. Uh-huh. Uh there's or uh or they also think of looking at DuckTales or maybe Sonic again. We're not sure. Honestly, not. I, I'm not if, if y'all didn't want to do Sonic again, that would be okay. Wow! Especially with, we had Knuckles and Tails in one issue, and then we also have it's, uh, Metal Sonic. It's just, it's just not that good. <laughs> it's, it's just, just like, not that good. good. I don't know how to break it. Listen, have I'm you, a Sonic Have you fan. seen the views on those, though? I, other people are say they not guys. good, or are they great? No, they're great on those. Are ones. they really? I, I think like half the book isn't even reading. It's just watching Sonic pinball all over the place. You're just jealous. <laughs> Echidnas are always jealous. The echidna, yeah, right. Knuckles isn't even a real echidna. He doesn't have the tube nose thing. I haven't seen him lay one egg. Oh my gosh. Because echidnas do that. In case you wanted a uh, biology lesson. Right. But anyway. Uh, What's up, everybody? Hope everyone is doing well this new Comics Day Eve. Uh, if you are new to the channel, this is where RDV and I go through all the comic books coming out this week, and we Man. list out our own personal top five, talking about the books yep. that we are most looking forward to. I was trying to find sometimes my list. Sometimes they cross over, like, sometimes they don't. I was going, I was like, where's my list? I was looking through here, I'm like, that there's a, a partial one. Oh, wait, that's a different one. I, I know. I'm, I, I literally am just <laughs> scribbling down right now what's I, on my list. I, I have a notepad, so basically for everything. It's been um, a it's been a busy. So day. Anybody ever goes through like the in like a hundred years from now, they're like, oh, this guy's artifact you find in this place. It's like, what is Duke? What is <laughs> Feral? <laughs> <laughs> what, what is Duke? Duke? But what is this text? text? <laughs> they're like, they're like, they're like, this is so old. I'm thinking about like movies like Ghostbusters, anything in the '80s, Commando and stuff, and like Rambo. How many uh -huh. years from now, they were like, we we're like, wow, these movies are so ancient. Kind of like we look at when we look at like movies in the '30s, and the '40s. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mariah says, "Wow, I'm not a Sonic fan, but I really like those books." And of I course, you get the apples right away. I don't know if I have anything that counts for apples uh, this week, actually. It, last week was my big week for yeah. comics. I had like 12 books. This week I'm down to four. I'm trying to find a fifth one uh, as we're as we're doing our just opening oh, monologue I, I or whatever. The, I, I read that first issue of Torpedo. Man, is that a uh, piece, uh, uh, piece of crap uh, main character. The, the gangster. Torpedo? Yeah, Torpedo 1972, I think it's called. Eric Brain told me on it. Oh, okay. That, oh, what he does to that girl, I was just like, man, now, now, now I want him to get killed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just you say, he's, not, he's, not a nice, he's not a nice guy. Art's decent. <laughs> but man, they're like, they set up, dude, you used to hate this guy. So Really? But anyway, um, we're not here to talk about that book, but um, do you check it out. It's from the, it's from the, the creator of uh, 100, 100 Bullets. Oh, oh, what's his name? Uh, Brian Azzarello? I think that's what it is, yeah. I think that's we're, the guy. We're gonna, yeah. We were going to have more information when he's done throwing apples. But uh, he's anyway. Stop throwing apples and give us information. <laughs> information. Come All on. right. Uh, okay. Let me share my screen here. We'll get this going. And then uh, I'll have to let you go first with your five. I don't even know if I've got uh, I might have oh, five. If you're still writing down, let me know. I'll... I'll... I might have five. I might have a fifth one here. I had four on my, my pull list for the longest time. There's a few books I became aware of this week uh, that I may yeah. I may throw in here. But, uh, yeah, no, I'll go ahead and start. Number five. Actually, what's this? 
tomato. Oh, this might be. This might. Throw be some lettuce. Favorite. It's a bacon. Okay, I, I, I take. Oh, it's, no. it's artist. It's the artist. Okay, not the writer. Oh, okay. Rizzo, Azarello, they sound similar enough. Okay. Um, <laughs> really, Zach? Wow. They sound similar. What do you want from me? Um, okay, so I got number five here. I was just made aware of this. I didn't realize this was coming out, or I knew and I forgot. Uh, number five for me this week is coming from Image Comics. Got a good amount of Image this week. Um, from Tony Fleeks. But which Tony Fleeks book is it? Because there, I think there's two. Um, this is yeah. a spinoff. Are they calling it a spinoff? It is. It's a yeah. It's it looks. A spin -off. It looks like a spinoff. Uh, it's a spinoff from the main series. I know trauma. Yeah, it's a spinoff of Stray Dogs. Is what it looks like. Oh, you're doing that happy. one? Okay, because they're both spinoffs. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that was the other one you were going to go to. That one looks good too. The, the bad girl one looks good, too, but I'm, so, I'm looking at Feral because I really enjoyed Stray Dogs a lot. Really? And this looks like it's very similar to that. Um, it, in fact, the funny thing about Stray Dogs was that it was drawn like such a Disney book, but with such, like, dark storytelling. Um, Guys, not bananas. This looks even... This looks even wait, what's that? <laughs> I said bacon, lettuce, and some bread. So I, don't eat, I don't see. I don't like tomatoes, but I know that since I've said that, that's all they're gonna throw at me now. Well, yeah. Right? Then we got watermelons and bananas. I I like watermelon and I like bananas. If, if, if they throw grape soda, I'm banning the whole entire chat. All they're gonna do is throw tomatoes at me now because I like apples, I like bananas, I like watermelons. If I say I don't like something, that's what they're gonna throw at me. Bet. Um. But anyway. So Feral, uh, a set, instead of dogs, this one is focused on cats, as you can see really? by the cover there. Wow, what an idea. What an idea, right? We've done dogs. Let's do cats Homeward now. Bound with rabies. It, it really, it, that's it. <laughs> that is the Disney movie. It is Homeward Bound, but more horrific and filled with blood, it looks like. Uh, so you have three cats. Look, it's even three pets. It's, it's literally Homeward Bound just with all cats. I'm surprised, I'll though. You're, you're a dog guy, though. So you're getting three indoor cats. You're like, ah, let the cats die. <laughs> uh, actually, I don't mind cats. Everyone thinks I hate cats because I'm a dog person. I actually well, like, like cats cat because really cats can take care of themselves to a degree. Yeah. Dogs kind of need supervision. Uh, but you have Elsie, Lord Fluffy, Fluffy Britches, and Patch are three indoor cats lost in the not-so-great-out woods during a nightmarish rabies outbreak. So this is like a, a zombie story for cats. Yep. <laughs> Without their humans to protect them, the cats rush to find their way home before they're eaten by the forest full of rabid beasts on their tails. Uh, so this comes from Tony Fleeks, uh, who did a really good job with Stray Dogs. If you haven't read Stray Dogs, I highly recommend that. That was a great story. I'm a little um, worried, though, as far as, as far as his writing, because I what he's been writing with Tony... Um, on uh, local man, yeah, he gets he gets a backup stories and he gets a chance to write and mm -hmm. it's not that great. I, I mean, Stray Dogs was really good though, and, and so if he if he brings that same energy to Feral, I feel like it'll be it'll be just as good. Um, I also the thing I I think I don't know a lot about horror movies or or classic horror movie posters. But I do love all the energy and effort they put into some of these oh, covers, yeah. looking like yeah. horror movies. Yes, homages. All, all um, the Dawn of, Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead, Outbreak, the Dawn of the Dead cover, um, Night of the Living Dead, Dead cover, Return yeah. of the Living Dead. Like A said, lot of Living Dead. They're really leaning into the zombie uh, theme. Yeah, uh, we got Outbreak. Gremlins. Twenty days later. I mean, they're they're um, really the witch. shit. It is the cats, one. Nightmare on Elm Stream. Uh, 28 uh, days late. The 28 days later yeah. one is pretty awesome. I kind of yeah. like that one. Yeah. yeah I mean, these are just fantastic. I want to actually recommend this to my sister because she loves zombie movies and scary movies and stuff. <laughs> is that really? Is that the shining? That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. yeah shining. Uh, so these called the children. Yeah. yeah the the Jaws on. one is also pretty great. Yeah. Mandy. I actually really like the Jaws <laughs> one. Fright, and that's Fright Scotty Nights. Young too. That's awesome. Yep. So uh, the cover Fright is fun. Yeah. I think the story inside, like I said, I think it has potential to be really good. 
Um, so yeah, I completely, yeah. it went over my head when this was first announced and I completely forgot about it until I, you know, saw it recently. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to reading this. The I think one, it's going to be a lot of fun. I, even though I don't care for the movie, probably the, the best one here is, is the, the exorcist cover. Oh, that's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> These are all, I mean, a lot of them are really great. Uh, like the, it one is really funny. Yeah. Oh, the yeah, I mean, there's, there's a lot of good stuff here. The Aristocat. Okay, so in a, yeah. in a twist, there's an Aristocats. So it's not a scary movie. It's a cat movie. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, Pet Cemetery, Fright Night. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 3. I love that. Yeah. And then I've never heard of Run the Jewels. I've never heard of that one either. I saw that. Or uh, Hanging Their Baby. One. Something is killing the children. Oh my! They even got a an homage to a comic in here. Something is killing the children. Yep. I mean, kudos to these guys. Normally, I, I I'm not a huge <laughs> fan of the variant cover business tactic, but these guys actually it's, it looks like they have a lot of fun with it. So, but yeah, Feral number one. That's going to be my my number five book this <laughs> week. I'm I'm looking forward to it. I just love that. Don't get bit. Don't get scratch. Don't become feral. <laughs> yeah we'll be re we'll be revisiting this um, on uh, tonight uh going with my number five this week this marks five years since this ip has been in comic book form and it's not i don't know what to think of this you know it's not what i what i wanted but i will take whatever i can for this ip and uh it's it's through dark horse and uh that's not a hint for you. Oh, I know what you, I know what I saw that too, and I may pick up this one actually because I really enjoyed the movie that it's based on. Ghostbusters Back in Town, which is supposed to be a prequel to the actual movie. You know, year and a half after the events of Ghostbusters after life, the Ghostbusters officially back in business, headed to where it all began. New York City. New, New York, York City. City. Yay. Yes. Sally, Joe. Gary, Trevor. Baby and our movie is a firehouse. They're ready to take on this fang or family business, or are they? Ghostbusters on top of changing family dynamics is the way of going. Our Ari, uh, and then uh, that's simply what the paranormal force is counting on. See what the big apple has in store for Generation Ghostbusters, the first installment of all new series that bridges the gap between Ghostbusters Afterlife and the upcoming sequel. Uh, Greg Peck's writing it, so that's not terrible. No, and it's not Gary Duggan, but I mean, it's it's one step above. Did Duggan do good or did Duggan do bad? Duggan needs his quit digging as well. But, um, that's, what I, that's what I thought. Okay. <laughs> the way you said that, I, I couldn't tell if he was good or bad. Okay. But, uh, yeah, there's an Alta cover. Uh, yeah, the, the movie was a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun with the movie. I like the um, Alta cover. They're just pulling on a trailer, the Ectel. <laughs> <that's laughs> like at a Shell gas station. <laughs> that's, what, that's what it looks like. But, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, what a transformation for like I said the movies just for uh the main the main girl who plays um oh, what's what's her name Phoebe the one that plays Phoebe plays plays the main girl I forget what her name is but uh you see her uh McKenna Grace McKenna Grace is this you see oh, her yeah. in the she what she obviously puts her hair ties it up you know and puts a wig mm -hmm. on and just completely transforms into this character but you the see way outside, she looks wow. so. She looks like she's Harvey. Uh, what's the guy's name? The guy who played Egon? Is it Harold Ramis? Ramis? Harold Ramis. I want to say Harvey. Her Harvey. The way she looks like she's legitimately Harold Ramis's descendant is uncanny. Like uh, the facial expressions and everything, like it's uncanny how similar. Like said, as I said, a seventeen-year-old actress. The way she dresses outside of that, she dresses like Gwen Stacy. She really does. It's. I, yeah. I saw a picture of her because she, she's blonde in real yeah. life. And yeah, it's, it's just a total transformation. Uh, she's always got the head, the black headband, got the the, the nice you know clothes stuff. You know, mm -hmm. she literally is Gwen Stacy. And I'm surprised that they haven't put her in a movie with Peter Parker like that. But yeah, yeah, no, um, the yeah, in Interior of Dragon, the movie does have some pacing is issues, but other than that, it's a respectful movie, and it doesn't. It's, it's like good. It. It's, good. It, it, it's not and, and it's, afterlife. Or Ghostbusters one, but it's definitely good. I love the fact that they're following the formula from the first two movies. Or where the first two movies focus on Peter Bankman as a main character, 
She's the main character in this new series, and I love how McKenna Grace says, "This is the fourth movie." The fourth. She always <laughs> every, say that. She does it, and every year she says, "Yeah, this being the fourth That's movie." Awesome. No, no, no acknowledging for that crap the other that they tried to put out. Uh, they learned their lesson. You know, cater to the wrong people, and you end up uh, making as much money as you want to. But that being said, though, we're not talking about the movie, but. It's weird seeing a Ghostbusters at Dark Horse. <laughs> he was IDW for the longest time. And <laughs> I'm just happy to get a Ghostbusters comic book. Um, I don't know exactly if they're going to be like going after ghosts and all this. As you know, the, the movie starts off with them chasing a ghost. Hopefully we get to see them going on some cases and stuff. But uh, yeah, I look uh, look for this. Also, how does Slimer get into the there? Oh, so um, you're gonna you're probably gonna see some spoilers uh, if you haven't seen the new movie because yeah. they're 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 this is bridging both those movies. So you're gonna have events in there and events in the afterlife, kind of like mixed in. But uh, look forward to it. Twenty pages. I uh, uh, no, no, I don't know who Blue the the De, De is. De Laquan? I'm not familiar. Hang on. Yeah, I can but, find out in just a second. Blue Delaquanti. Yeah, is a cartoonist, illustrator. I need an example. Give me some. I got um, the cover. The cover is Kyle Lambert. That's why I was like, okay. Yeah, the cover is definitely going to be different than the interior. Going from I know I'm I'm, I'm going to suffer. <laughs> it's going to be some Steven Universe looking garbage. It looks like. I hope. I hope not. Maybe oh it'll God. be better. Maybe they have like a house style that they want the artist to go with. Could be, you know. Dan but. Dan Shoning and Josh uh, Burnham, the guys who worked on the IDW, she does go over the Dark Horse and work over there with Ghostbusters. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, they should just jump ship. And uh, because everybody, everybody ripped on the IDW Ghostbusters because the fact that, oh, why the main Ghostbusters they, they look so cartoonish? Licensing. Yeah. They're not, yeah, they're not allowed to look anything like the actors. So, but when you, but when you saw like the ghosts and everything else he did, it was spot on awesome. You know, but anyway, uh, that is my number five for this week. Yeah, I want to go watch it again. To be honest, I, I really it is fun. It. Like I said, I said it does does suffer some. Uh, There's one or two pacing issues. There, yeah. there are a couple of characters I feel like that weren't necessary. Yes, but um, Patton yeah. Oswalt's character wasn't terrible. Neither was um, the Indian guy, Kamali Nigani. Whatever the fire. He was actually pretty good. He, yes. he was pretty funny. He was funny in this, you know, and says Dan Aykroyd gets more of a role in this too. I love Dan Aykroyd. Yeah, Dan and Winston. It was, um, it was yeah, less, Winston. I was shocked. It was less Bill Murray. Yeah, that's the thing. They didn't have as much Bill Murray as the other two. Yeah. Even um, Melnitz, um, I felt like didn't have a whole lot to do either. She got more than than she Bill got, did. She got more than Bill did, but still less than Dan Aykroyd and. Um, and yeah. Aykroyd Which Winston. I think is okay because the fact that they're kind of trying to move on from them they're, I can understand past, that. they're passing the torch i can understand that so also there wasn't enough podcasts for me i really like podcasts. i mean podcast was just kind of shoehorned in there podcast podcast is a great character he deserves better i hope they give him more in the comic series but it was too. great to see the call back to the library but the, the library like, scene was great. here the guy originally fired and kicked him out of the university the yeah the time. library scene the, all of the library stuff yeah. was great yeah so there were some anyway. We can do a Ghostbusters rave stream later. Maybe we maybe we will. Maybe we will. Also, the dude who plays Winston is Jack. Do you know he's close to 80? Ernie Hudson is in his is Ernie in Hudson his is close to 80 years old, and that that dude is in shape. He's in his mid-50s, man. Oh, so hot. I misspoke. Mid 70s. He's in his mid 70s. Mid 70s. That there it is. Yes, yeah. there it is. He's yeah. But anyway. <laughs> anyway. Let's stop praising Ghostbusters. Let's move on. No, um, we must continue. <laughs> we're going to move on to a different series right here, but one that I don't think you'll mind talking about. You may even have this on your list. Uh, number four for me is Conan the Barbarian, issue number nine, coming from Titan Comics. Oh, this has just been a real fun series. It really makes me do a double take every time I look at one of the Conan books Jim Zub wrote for Marvel and just the night and day difference between well, the two. Have, uh, having people telling what you can't, only things you can do versus yeah. being allowed to actually be more faithful to the, the adaption, the actual books and stuff. 
It's absolutely, it's, it's incredible. Uh, this is the Conan that I bet you everybody has been wanting to read this whole time. Um, this has been great. I've read a few of the Marvel ones and I don't really care for them. This has actually been a lot more fun. It's been a lot more fun. There's been a lot more interesting stuff. I feel like, and you get just pure action adventure, sword and sandals, fantasy, um, you know, Robert De La Tour, uh, he does the art. The art is incredible. I didn't notice the handprint on the cheek there. That's <laughs> the blood. Yeah. That's actually pretty funny. Um, but it's yeah, this has, just been, yeah. this has been awesome. Uh, Robert De La Tour actually does a cover here. It's the cover C that I find really, really cool. It's the guy with the elephant head. Uh, the like map this. though also looks really cool. I love these old, the old school, like fantasy map. Yep. Uh, that you would see for like you used to see them for like Lord of the Rings and and different things like that. But I do like the the hyper the Hyperbolean age Hyperbolean age uh, map as well. But yeah, this has just been a ton of fun. I'm not even necessarily a huge Conan fan, but I've I just really been dude enjoying. It. Hmm? Dressed up here and he's got an elephant head for. He's him. got the elephant head, yeah, like chained up to the top of the the throne, so that he. I mean, it's really a, a really cool look a really cool aesthetic uh but yeah it's just been great to read i highly recommend it if you want like a a fantasy comic uh this is i i don't think it gets better than this right now i can't think of a better example chris marino isn't he doing something else you guys liked chris marino doesn't sound familiar hang on i can look and see though i thought he was done he hasn't done anything that I recognize. Okay, there was another Chris guy. I, th- I was looking at the artist that's on G.I. Joe. Oh, that's Chris Mooningham. Okay, yeah. But, uh, that's a different Chris. Yeah, but this is just, like I said, it's just been a lot of fun. $4.99, so, you know, pretty good. You know, it's about your average price for a comic. I, I think, though, you're going to get a lot more entertainment value out of this uh, versus if you look at, like I said, some of Jim Zub's Marvel Conan or uh, or most anything coming from Marvel, I feel like he'll get more entertainment value out of this. Uh, Jim's Love's writing just mixed with Delator's art has just been fantastic. Did so. he spank her? Ed, Ed, we'll Even let though go. we probably won't see Belit again, which is sad for me because I do like Belit, but maybe one of these days he'll have Red Sonia show up in in this, and then that'll be that'll be great. I think it, no, honestly, no. Uh, the fact that it's not done dynamite. I think that's why it's so good because whatever reason when they uh dynamite seems to have problems as far as when it comes to books they put out like i said red sonia finally is back to being where she was you know not yeah. written by not written by mark russell actually written actual like a woman uh grunbeck, then, right uh, yeah Tor- 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 uh, um nice very, very very nice very nice person um has a bit of potty mouth because she's Norwegian. <laughs> you know what? The fun women in comics seem to be like that. It's yes. always the ones that like aren't that are like pure pur- puritanical in the way they talk. They seem to be like the Karens. <laughs> she, the I, women I, 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 they I, I, curse I was, though, they're the fun ones. Yeah. I watched an interview with her where she was an interview and she's like, "We just had fucking snow again." I fucking hate snow. She's dropping f bombs. <laughs> I, I love it. You know, uh, you know. But anyway, um. Yes, Conan the Barbarian. We'll be talking about this later on tonight, too, as well. <laughs> nice. I agree with Ethereal, by the way. The bearded look is superior to the clean-shaven look. Where do you see a beard? I'm, I'm reading Ethereal's comments. No, but where does he see a beard, though? Oh, I have no idea. But I think if Conan had a beard, he would look more manly and badass. I'm disagreeing with him. There's a, ton, there's a tons of... Uh, Barbarians that have beards that he slays, and <laughs> kills them. I'm not saying the beard is like a secret weapon. I'm just saying it's cool. I'm just saying that's how he stands out because he clean shaved. Mm. He uses a sword, bro. He shaves with a sword. Yeah, that is that would be kind of badass if he did do that. All right, uh, all right. My number four for this week is a book we just we talked about already tonight. Already, down. yeah. All right, Feral. Oh, okay, okay. Um, put it a little higher on the list as far as uh, I mean. I guess we lower because I I don't I don't know anything about it. 
other than it's the guy from Stray Dogs. Never read Stray Dogs, but what I've seen of his writing ability on, uh, what is it, Local Man, it's yeah. it's okay. I think his art's better than him actually or his writing. But uh, but uh, this is gonna be Tony Rodriguez. He's be doing the art on there, and they said the along with Trish Foster or Forstner. And uh, yeah, so looks like he's got cover art, and uh, along with her. So I'm not sure which ones are his. I mean, he just maybe they just, they, 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 they co-did this. But um, I love the fact that I love it. I love anything that has to do with like like looks like Disney and horror. <laughs> All of her company with zombies, would be awesome. No, uh, that'd be great too. But I like the concept. It's homeward bound. And they have to get home before before they get infected by you know rabies, you know, you know don't get bit, don't get scratched, you know, because and yeah, the fact that three cats are basically used to being primped and proper, never have to go outside. It's basically throwing Garfield outside. And he's, he's like, what the hell are we supposed to do now? How am I supposed to survive? <laughs> um, but overall, it looks good. Like I said, covered the cover, the cover, the cover gimmick. I roll my eye at though because. <sighs> There's, there is a lot of good covers. It is a gimmick, but like I said, um, they had a lot of fun with it, and, that, and you can tell. Yeah, yeah. And you know, there's gonna be somebody who collects every single frick cover, and that's how they make their money. Yep. I hope. Yeah. I, I hope the next couple of issues don't have like a thirty billion uh, variants. Keep it to three. So you have the main book, then two variants. That's what you like to do. That's what I'd say. Yeah. But. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, we already talked about this. Let's move on to your number four, my friend. My number, my number four, my number three, sir. We talked about my number four. Oh, no, sorry, my number three. My number three. <laughs> We're going to take a break from the indie comic scene for just a little bit. We're going to go to my one DC pull this week. Detective Comics. Let's get <laughs> No, no. My apologies to Ram V. He actually retweeted me. Is it the, is it the Amanda um, Waller book? What's the Amanda Waller book? Suicide Squad? The Green Arrow book. Oh, it's not the Amanda Waller book. It's the Green Arrow book, son. And yes, it is. Uh, it is Green Arrow 10. This is the one I have been waiting for. Sam. A character <laughs> that has been absent from DC with the exception of one appearance in Green Arrow's 80th anniversary special. She has been absent since the New 52 started. Mia Dearden is back in comics. The second Speedy, who I actually like a little bit more than Roy. Here's the problem um, with his his half sister being so young. Connor is at her age. Uh, I don't see that as an issue. I don't really see that as super different. It my dad and different. my youngest uncle were like close to twenty years apart. So these are these are like five or three years apart age. Eh. So it is it is weird. Like you call her aunt Aunt Amico. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see too much of an issue with that, but no, I uh, I have been waiting for this for a while. I've been waiting to see uh, Mia Dearden return to comics, so I'm glad that uh, that Josh Williamson is bringing her back. We have Sean Isaac on the art. Roy Harper is missing. Well, we've known this for a while. Amanda Waller's kind of uh, conscripted him into Suicide Squad duty. Green Arrow and Connor Hawk are going to investigate what happened to him and what Amanda Waller has done to tear up the rest of the Arrow family. Uh, Waller, they are making Waller responsible for, you know, keeping all of the Arrow group split. <laughs> so, and apparently she seems to have conscripted Red Arrow, Red Canary, Arrowette, and Speedy uh, all into her. And these are all actually, you know what? I know we, we riff on like legacy characters and new sidekicks and hidden half siblings a lot. With the exception of how Arrowette was treated in that Young Justice thing that Megan Fitzmartin did, that garbage. If we yeah. disregard that, these are all these are four, I believe, four well-written characters. Um, so yeah, so I'm I'm looking forward to to reading through this. Uh, my one gripe is that the main story, and I think it's the only story because they don't do backups in Green Arrow. It only says twenty pages, which it's not I, a lot I, for a four dollar book. Like I said, so, I, I, I read it, to it earlier today. It's, oh, did you? It's okay. Well, you would say that it's a four um, out of five. Four out 
of five is great. What are you talking about? Most of the books I love are four out of five. So just strive to get that five. five be, <laughs> wait, what's that? Strive to get that five star. Eh. <laughs> five stars are rare. Okay, a five star has to be rare. If you gave out five stars like there were candy, five stars wouldn't mean anything. Four stars I can deal with. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's it's a lot of fun. I love Sean Isaac's artwork as well. I think it's fantastic. Josh Williamson going strong with this. I've said before, it's not my favorite of his DC books. I think Superman is still the best one. But, I mean, Green Arrow is right on up there. I'm glad to be reading a Green Arrow book again because uh, he is one of my favorite DC heroes. So, yeah. Yeah. Happy to happy to, to be picking up Green Arrow this week. It's a short story with a big, with the short story issue with the reunion. Nice. That's pretty much, that's pretty much that's what we're okay. going for. I could deal without the short part, but you know, wait, 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 wait. A, a reunion with Speedy and and you know all of that that sounds really great. The, you know, the, the reason the, 20, the reason the stories are twenty pages because they have eight pages full of just. Oh, is it the ads? <laughs> stop gone, you DC! Stop getting in your own way with these ads, man! Golly. Yes. Anyway. Uh, also, how did Arrowette get a, get away with wearing that when she was a younger teenager? Like, how was that allowed? That's, that's her new costume. I know that's her new costume, but didn't she wear a similar costume when she was younger? Like in the in the Young Justice days? I thought she just wore the the the, the Roy costume. I can't recall. I'd have to go back and look for it. The regular Speedy costume. The speedy costume has, I mean, Mia's wearing the same outfit that she's been wearing the whole time. What I mean, I mean, as far as like Roy, when you, when you, when you, you know, like the, it's similar to the, the one they were in CW, kind of like that. Anyway, oh, okay. alrighty. Uh, and what do you guys do? Do not check out Power Girl this week. That art in there is horrendous. Oh, uh, did they it. change the artist? They must have. It is horrendous. Nice. I mean, poor Power Girl. I, I, I miss Ryder Osmo. Bad level art. Um, I saw I saw a Facebook that uh, there was a Facebook group that posted there was like this AI generated picture of Power Girl in front of like an adoring public. They all want to take pictures with her and stuff. And it's 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 Power Girl with the Sydney Sweeney look, if you uh, if you know what I mean. And there were people in the comments saying that Power Girl was the worst thing DC ever created because of that picture. I was like, are you serious right now? Big, big. Is because she has boobs. Women should not have boobs. Ah. Boobs terrify yeah. people. Flat chats and ugly women who are, are obsessed. Are yeah, obsessed. right. That's yeah. all it is. This is ugly, jealous woman. Yep. All anyway. right. My number three for this week is a book we also talked about. <laughs> Stop, Stop copying, copying my poll list, Vinkman. <laughs> it's a Conan O'Brien. I thought you would have had a local man on your list or something by now. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Sorry, yes. guys. We did yes. not plan this. <laughs> Come to Barbarian, man. Like I said, I, I, I've been reading it since uh, debut. Loving it. This is the second arc. Uh, last we had Conan, Conan uh, the Barbarian, who was possessed by one of the demons for the Shard. He is, you know, they want to get this sword. Uh, that he used to basically uh, slay the the demon or had demon in the first arc, so they run, he sold the sword after this, wanting nothing to do with it. So they wanted the pitch sword back, and uh, they are using him to get it. And uh, hopefully, it looks like he's gonna get his uh, maybe get his uh, body back. Who knows? Um, but yeah, uh, uh, art is awesome. This uh, Delator's art is great. Um, Jim Zub. Not hindered by LGBTQ Marvel. You can actually write a story. Actually has babe. It's like basically like imagine if Duke Nukem was made today. That's Marvel. <laughs> <laughs> oh and, and, and going to Titan is like, hey, that's the original Duke Nukem. You know, that's wow. You know? Yeah. It gets out of Marvel and DC. You actually find out there's actually women in comic books. Not just Shocking, you dressing up. Isn't it? Yeah, light. <laughs> yes uh women are not guys pretending to be women in comic books they're not dylan's marvel dc they're sydney's yes they're sydney's 
and they should be allowed to breathe, allowed to proudly just puff out their, their chest and say, I'm a woman. Screw you. Hmm. Anyway, I love, I love this book. Like I said, I'm not a huge Conan fan. Uh, I love the movie. First book with Conan Bar the Barbarian, when he doesn't have a beard whatsoever. It's great. Um, Michael's <laughs> in it too as well. Uh, probably the best Arnold movie that he's made, you know, you know, for Arnold movie. And, Better than uh, Predator? Predator's good, but I like Conan the Barbarian. I think Predator is his best. There's T2 and there's Predator. And, and then there's funny, Eagle all the way. Those are the top three Schwarzenegger movies. It's funny that you went straight to Predator, though. So uh, then you're like, wait, there's T2, there's T3. There's T, no, not T, no, not T3. I mean, T3 is okay, but it's not T2. You have, you have yeah. the best three movies are T2, Predator, and Jingle All the Way. Those are Arnold's best movies. Yeah. All right. Uh, no, I, I guess I'd, uh, I like Terminator 1. It's a good movie, but it's, you know, it's, it's okay. It's not really, not, it's, Arnold has parts in it, but it's mainly, uh, yeah, it's not really a big Arnold movie. It's he. It's T2, more of a little Hammer is more of an Arnold movie. movie. But I mean, when it comes to Arnold movies, like I said, Conan and then Commando. I mean, Commando's Commando. good. Commando's good. I, I love Conan the Barbarian. Just the whole thing. Um, I'll just say that if you're gonna watch Conan the Barbarian at two o'clock in the morning, make sure you have a cup of coffee because you'll be up to five. <laughs> <laughs> I made the mistake. I watched it at Voodoo because we we're going to review it on the channel one day. And I was like, oh, man, I should have just like, watched it Commando earlier. is good, but it is not Predator. Predator is still my favorite of all the Arnold. I will, I will acknowledge that T2 is a better film than Predator. Barely. But Predator is my favorite of the Arnold movies. All righty. Give me let's, your apples. I don't care. Let's go to your number two. <laughs> number two. You know, I pretty much want to you, you, if you don't know my number two and my number one, uh, I don't. I, I, I think your number two is Duke. Give him, give him a prize. Give the man a no prize. He he nailed it. Duke number four, which uh, is also my number two. Oh, get out of here! Is it really? <laughs> yes. Oh, get out of here. Well, hey, we can talk about it together. You need to quit looking at my list, bro. <laughs> you you copy two of mine. You just caught up to me. <laughs> You just caught up to me, sir. Duke um, is the close discovery the truth about alien robots that have landed on Earth. But who or what is Mars? And what is Milky Way? Why is want... Milky Way? Um, <laughs> when is Milky Way? When is Milky Way? I want a Milky Way now. Dang the it. other Josh. Josh Williamson books always come in twos. I've noticed that. There's never a week where I get just one Joshua Williamson book. It's, I just noticed that Tom Riley, Tom Riley looks like a 15-year-old 15, uh, 15 girl. We just buzzed her hair. Uh, I thought he, he. I think he looks more like Elijah Wood with a buzzed haircut. I could be wrong, but um, yeah, Duke has just been a ton of fun. Um, man, I, I tell you, I love the twist. I love the differences yeah. between this and and the classic GI Joe. Um, but also the twist. I mean, not really a twist. If you know who the Baroness is, you probably saw it coming. The end of last issue. Uh, the whole double cross that ended up but uh yeah this has just been a ton of yeah. fun i'm ready for i like how it's laying the groundwork for gi joe so much so i'm, I'm ready for it to get there so we can actually get to uh, gi joe this cover makes it look like rock and roll and and uh are, are, are working with uh yeah him. i like that yeah rock and roll and stalker and clutch <laughs> and clutch, clutch is like i got the best part <laughs> Clutch really does. Look at Clutch being respectful, though. No hands on her waist or anything. I'm going to tell you right now, Clutch has become my favorite G.I. Joe. Clutch is pretty great. I do like Clutch. I also like Rock and Roll a lot, too. Um, yeah. Yeah, this has just been a ton of fun, though. Stop if you me. want, if you like G.I. Joe, but you want something a bit fresher, um, you know, something a little bit out the ordinary from, like, the normal, like, the real American hero stuff, which is still great. But if you want something different, you should be checking out Duke and also Cobra Commander. Dang, they gave her backside of this one. Yeah, they did. <laughs> She'd been doing them squats. Same with those Cobra guys. <laughs> I know, they, they've been hitting the gym. They don't skip leg day either. They got glutes. But uh, yeah, this is it's been a ton of fun. The art also, Tom Riley, forget how he looks. We made fun of him for that. His art is really good. I, I really like Tom Riley's art. Oh, look at this one. That's a fun one. Yeah. 
I'm kind of over the whole reflecting the face and the and the shiny thing. It's kind of. Well, I'm just saying this is is a whole new kink side that uh, the Duke. <laughs> well, you took it there, sir. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, this this looks like a lot of fun. I'm glad to be reading this. By the way, did we read Undead Quinn's books so far? No, we haven't. Okay, well, let me get us. He said he only had three this week. Uh, he said his number three book is Somna number three. I believe that's the Becky Cloonan Tula Latoy book. I thought you were saying Metroid. Somna? Samus. Oh, Samus. Oh. <laughs> and then his number two book is Feral number one. So we're all getting Feral this week. We're all going Feral. Will Feral. I bet you we, we share the same number one, too. I'm pretty so sure we, we do. We have four out of five of the same books. You know what? This means we'll get done earlier. It, it does. <laughs> That's true. It's a shame so, that you don't have a a D and D game to go to. It's just like okay, we're just gonna talk more. <laughs> spur of the moment, D and D game. No D and D game happens spur of the moment. I promise you. That's right, guys. Because Jack demanded after we're done here, we're reading Sonic. I didn't agree to that at all. Fine, fine. We'll do Skylanders. No. <laughs> That's part of the reason of my disdain of Sonic books. There may be a Skylanders story in the back. Oh, we, we've been reading the trade, so you don't you don't get the, the backup stories. That's right. That's right. Anyway. Only, when, only when you're not here. <laughs> uh, all right, yeah. So Am I gonna count down first or do you want to count down first? Down. Yeah. Give us your five through. Five through two. Here we go. This is the recap. Number five for me this week is going to be Feral, issue number one from Tony Fleeks with all the horror movie comic posters, uh, covers. Excuse me. Number four is going to be Green Arrow number 10, The Return of Mia Dearden. Number three. No, I'm sorry. Number four was Conan. Number three was Green Arrow number 10. Number two is Duke, issue number four. And my number five was Ghostbusters Back in Town, number one, The Dark Horse. Number four was Feral, number one, Conan, number nine. And uh, Duke, you saw number four there. Of course, our number one is Ultimate Spider-Man, number three. If you've Gotta be. Out, it had to be Ultimate Spider-Man. Because, uh, oh, gone, yeah. it's good. Yeah, like I said, we got the Green Goblin popping here. Now we're, uh, like I said, uh, next issue is going to feature Gwen Stacy with Harry Osborn. Yeah, that's right. Number four is going to have Gwen Stacy, isn't it? Oh, I just don't. The I know. I see are... a lot of people upset about that. Like it, it Gwen, makes Gwen, sense. Gwen and Harry being married. It, it's, it's fine. It does Can not we're... bother me at all. Why would she be? What do you so, think she so, would be so, dead? So here's my here's my theory on this. That he's a Green Goblin. Glenn's going to end up getting accidentally killed. <laughs> Yo. But against Peter. Harry goes What if Peter. it actually would drive Harry to being but like, what if like right now, Harry doesn't seem crazy. So here's the other thing. What if they make it, it's not Harry in the suit. What if it's Gwen? Nah, it wouldn't be Gwen. Wouldn't that be a cop out? I don't think it would be Gwen. That'd be kind of cool. Anyway, let's talk about this because first of all, I have several things that I'd like to mention. First of all, we're getting bullseye, a bullseye in this. Yes, um, an armored bullseye face. An armor. I mean, I mean, I mean, can we also talk about how overused the body armor thing is? Like, I understand yeah. we're trying to be like practical, but not yeah. everything needs to be Iron Man esque. Well, y'all. everyone has Wakanda armor. <laughs> I know some people can be like Spider Man and just use spandex. It's okay. Um, right. but so we have bullseye. Also, I really love this variant, the Mike Del Mundo variant. That's a good one too. The the Mary Jane Watson Woman of the Year Mother Model Entrepreneur. That's a cool one. But if you scroll down to that very last one, the Mike Del Mundo, nope, not the Greg Land, not the Greg Land. Uh, not the not the Greg Land. Yeah, the Del. No, that's not it either. That's Delato. That's Delato. That's not Del Mundo. What the hell's the oh? That's the one. Oh, you want the one from Spider Verse where he's in a robe? I like how it's like a funny homage to that issue where he throws the spider, where it's like Spider Man no more. Instead of a trash can, it's a laundry hamper. It's 
funny. It's looks clever. More, it looks like it's a more homage to the actual Sony verse. I mean, it could be that too. It could be both. I don't see why it couldn't be both. But anyway, yes. Uh, I mean, this has just been fantastic. If you've been wanting your Spider-Man book yeah. where he's a family man, where he and MJ are married, where he this looks is like he's the 70 one years old, Mark Bagley. Thank you very much. Wait, what's that? Mark Bagley drawing this. That's Why actually the best. Whoa. Well, yeah, yeah, I'd say Peter, that's probably the Peter best looks, Mark Bagley has drawn him in years. too old in this. Wait, what? Peter looks too old? Yeah. He needs yeah. to lose the freaking beard. He looks, like, he looks like Paul in this. No, he does not. Paul has a ponytail. I actually like him with the beard. The beard's growing on me. Oh. I don't mind it. But yeah, that's the best Mark Bagley has drawn Spider Man. He looks like you know, he looks like Mary Jane's dad. When they, when they show no, him. I don't think so. Yes. Uh yeah, this is just it, it's a great, great thing to see that we have Spider Man like this. He's a loving husband and father, and he's got you know his kids. They know his identity now, or at least his daughter does. Shocker um, is, is interesting because how big he is on this. Yeah, Shocker is like a, a dude is jacked up, but it, it's a ton of fun. I I highly recommend this to anyone who is a Spider Man fan who's been missing which, the Peter. Which MJ one are you connection. saying is a as a man face? The Mark Bagley one. That's the way he's always drawn her. I could I could see that with the Mark Bagley one. I could see it. Yeah. The other yeah. one, uh, the Elizabeth Torque one, was was pretty fun. I like that one. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, like I said, I'm looking forward to this, man. Uh, just the fact that uh, you have a Mary Jane P uh, Watson who's actually happy. Doesn't have to be a superhero. She's happy. She has a family. She has kids. She has a man, woman, that she, or husband that she loves. Yep. Uh, I said, like I said, uh, it's so much nicer when you see characters who actually aren't suffering, like Wally Woods' family. Dear God, the issue this week. What are you talking about? The new Flash. Oh, Wally West. Yeah, Barry. Barry. Barry yeah, Wally Wood. <laughs> oh, sorry. It would be improving if it was Wally Wood. Um, but uh, yeah, the whole thing with Barry notices that, oh, that uh, clearly oh, Linda's under a spell. The pipes. You talk about the pipes. The, the pipe, pipe. Yeah, I know. Okay, so are they finally following up on that? I noticed that in the first issue. But it gets hinted at because he can recognize she, does, she, doesn't, she doesn't care. She's like, oh, Barry, you're still here. I, my husband's a, my husband's a hero. He'll be fine. She's not worried whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And I'll, yeah, it's just. But other than that, like they said, the art is horrendous. The story is, is very mediocre. Ah, but you just don't like Mike Diodato art, though. Uh, I just don't like any bad art. Well, it's, it's you know, it said art. Even Dan Moore can draw bad art. You know, so. Where has Dan Moore ever drawn bad sure, art? I can find it. <laughs> Let me know. Let me know if you find it. <laughs> Let um, me know if you can see. How do you, how do you even see Diodato's art, bro? Dude, I love Diodato's art. His like new you take a flashlight to the book. Was phenomenal. What? <laughs> Do you take a flashlight to the book to see where everybody is? I think it's hysterical that I actually like a guy's art style that is darker, mm -hmm. and y'all are all the rest of the time. Oh, Zach doesn't like dark. Oh, he's racist. But Zach likes the dark art. Hello to you, Zach, and, and to your friend. Oh, I'm the end. Are friend. we friends? I don't I, know, I, but I'm the end friend somehow. Friend. They recognize you. I don't know how they recognize me. <laughs> I don't know how they thought we were friends. <laughs> uh, well, on the when technically it's Cy Spurrier that's ruined that's doing any wrecking if there's wrecking going on. Mike Diodato just draws what he writes. Mike Diodato fits on darker stories, and that and then they're they're really trying to make it a very dark story over there. And I it's the point where it's like, wow, we went from vibrant, happy to basically uh, depressed. And sad, you know. And yeah. Dark. Look, and, and like, did we mention the? They don't even show the kids anymore. The kids are like mentioned once, and that's it. They don't even don't even show the kids. Really? Yeah. Oh, so now the kids were some of the best stuff. I think. I they're, think they're phasing the kids. I think off. if you if you've been looking at Jeremy Adams' Twitter, I think he's got a new project with a bunch of kids superheroes because there's an artist that he's working with that's putting these like um, sketches oh, or concept art up. Just, so he just talked about a book that he was doing. 
he posted. Yeah, it. yeah, the one with the black, uh, the the unloaded uh, square. No, 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 he's doing he's doing uh, Flash Gordon. Well, Flash, yes, he is doing Flash Gordon, but I think he's also doing another DC book because he's been showing, he's been sharing these artist pictures of like Jay and Irie, Maxine Baker, um, yeah. Quiz Kid, and uh, Mr. Terrific Son. Fair play. Yeah, he's been showing pictures of all these kid superheroes. I think he's got a, like a kid book, like a teen book, uh, coming up. So Brian says I've been reading some of Man's Flash issues. DC should be shot, replacing him with the crap that they are doing now. I agree. I agree. And don't also, get, don't get pop kudos to you. Kudos <laughs> to you, Breen, for for finally catching up and and reading a Flash from Jeremy Adams. Breen, go get Pop Tate shotgun. <laughs> Uh, that's a hint. Uh, go check out our Archie re- reading that we did on the channel here. Fun. Um, but yeah, so getting back to this. Getting back to this. Getting off of yeah, our man, are we Are we going to get mad if it's if it's not Harry Osborn under this? That's actually, uh, I'll that's, be surprised. That's actually, and it's actually Norman Osborn is still alive? I will be surprised if it's not Harry Osborn. I don't think I'd be upset. I'd be Norman, has faked, Norman has faked his death before. Yes, that's true. I, I would be I would be pleasantly surprised because if 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 in a comic if it goes the way I predict it does I'm kind of disappointed because especially if it's Hickman because Hickman is us one of the superior comic writers of the modern era and so use, if he's doing what I'm thinking he's gonna do that kind of disappoints me. Please don't use superior in any anywhere in time you talk about Spider Man book. I <laughs> does it give you bad me. memories. Does it give you Dan Slot memories? <laughs> Yes. Couldn't help it. Uh, Couldn't help it. Uh, and you'll never guess who discovers Spider-Man's secret identity, apparently, it says in here. So basically, uh, someone mm-hmm. else is going to discover it. Was, his daughter already knows. The daughter knows. Yeah, May, May knows. I bet you it's either going to be MJ or his Uncle it, Ben. It, it, it's neither one of those. You think it's going to be Jonah? Yeah. <laughs> Could be. Jonah's Dude, the guy. way we've been doing Jonah is one of the most refreshing parts of this. Like the way he yeah. likes Peter and like Jonah. isn't angry all the time. It's it's refreshing. Jonah's the guy in the chair. <laughs> I'm all for you, Spider Man. Oh, it's like you because know. uh, they show him in the, in the costume here, but we saw at the last issue, basically his his daughter drew him a picture uh-huh. of the you know, of the a red and blue spider and stuff. Right. You know. Because she doesn't like his costume, it is now. It's scary, right? What? So, yeah, I hope I hope he uh, we get the. This is actually his costume. We're going to see here is actually showing this issue. Uh, so, and uh, yeah. Oh man, and uh, and um, what else we saw? Father Daredevil. Remember him? That's right, Father Murdoch. Murdoch. So we have Bullseye. So that, that, yeah. So okay, we have Bullseye. But to our knowledge, Daredevil does not yet exist. It's we don't know if he got it. There's no, there's no, we don't know if he got his orb before yeah, experiment. From Peter, Tony, yeah. Peter, didn't Peter hold on his for like a whole entire year? I don't think it was a year. No, I was think it was maybe time, a though. day. Yeah. I think it was maybe a day that he had it. But yeah. So looking forward to that. It said, like, yeah, the, the cover's coming out. But the, the Doug Otto cover's pretty cool, too. He said yeah. he still got the black costume, so. Like I said, you know, it'd be too early for a villain to re- le- uh, learn his identity. So I, would I think so too. Yeah, I think so I, too. I think I think Richard's gonna, his, his son's gonna re- recognize him. Maybe. Because, yeah. Or Mary Jane. Mary Jane's like, I just look at the security camera <laughs> in, in the that house. That looks familiar. <laughs> <laughs> that butt looks familiar. Okay. But uh, yeah. So let's look at the traits coming out this week here too let's look at the trades descender finally has a compendium so 50 bucks then world's finest uh they're pushing out that again which i thought this already came out what's that the world's finest the first the first trade i thought so too the yeah. devil is one i thought yeah i thought that one had come out ultimate invasions i'll be collected that's good. If you want to, if you want to, like, get a precursor for all the Ultimate Spider-Man, Ultimate Black Panther stuff, this that's a good looks place cool. to start. I might get this. The Spider Girl. Yeah. Yeah, that one looks good too. And it's only fifty bucks in here, or forty-five bucks in here, means it's even cheaper in stock trades. 
Oh yeah, gotta be. Um, Birds of Prey. It's a Gail Simone run. Okay, okay. I didn't even click on that because Birds of Prey. I just usually. You know, I, I assume it's it's the current Birds of Prey one. Yeah. Yeah. But if it's the Gail Simone, like that's one of the the books that she does that's actually worth a damn. Like. Yep. And actually, I should be able to tell looking at the cover because I see Lady Blackhawk on it. So well, look at, look, well, look at what's her name's Huntress's cover. She just took cleavage off. Bro. I know, I know. Also, the other big book up there is Daredevil by Ed Brubaker and Mike Volume Mark. Two. Yep. Uh, Brubaker. I was telling somebody earlier today. Somebody told me that they had bought uh, Ed Brubaker's Captain America, which is fantastic. But then also I'll buy him. His Daredevil is obviously really good. And then so is this short-lived X-Men run was also really good. So the complete Invincible Library is me off because I have the compendium. Mm -hmm. The complete library collection. So they're yeah. releasing it in chapters now, apparently, in smaller versions. Interesting. That's what it looks like. Are we are we are we not gonna mention the monkey in the room? The, no, the we're not. JL, the uh, JL I, Ape I, I, collection. I was hoping we could just sneak by. You know, I didn't get the April Fools or the April special that I, I really wanted to. This one, though, I don't think I'm going to be able to restrain myself. I think I'm going to have to go in full force. No monkeying around with this one. Yeah. Nothing? Great. No? Okay. Okay. Just, just, just... All right. <laughs> I'm over. <laughs> Let's say T. Barrett and uh, Santana. Where is it supposed to be at? Uh, Epic yeah, Wolverine. Read. Small. So I can't read the small print. <laughs> it looks like T. Barrett. Of Weapon X. But I don't. I don't think it's him. I think it's. Uh, Got it. It's Terry. Yeah, that's Terry. It. Yeah. That looks nice. nice. That's a, that's actually one of that's a that's a good Wolverine cover. Well, it collects eighty eight, the nineteen, the original series. Yeah. Yeah. One fifty nine to one seventy two. Going up into uh, Wolverine Annual 2000, 2001. So, it's actually, you're actually getting some good stuff here. Breen, are you really going to tell me that the JL Ape is not worth getting? <laughs> JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Jeff oh, Hulk wow. You actually kept the manga up this week. Yeah, I forgot to take it off. <laughs> oh, hey, they have the whole. Oh, wait, no, that's not the actual Hulk Gray story. That's just it's a gallery. Movie. That's yeah. the gallery. Okay. I am Batman. No, you're not. Um, <laughs> Usagi Hojimbo Saga. Yep. The second Absolute, edition. Absolute Joker and Luther. Wow. Interesting. Why does it look like Harpo Marx? Joker. Freaky. Kind of does a little bit. All these are the horn. <laughs> Go yet. If you don't know who Harpo Marx is, go do a Google search. No, nah, you know, if you don't know, you just go to go Sepku. Get out if of you here. don't know, then you probably don't know who Abbott and Costello just, are. Just practice Sepku and then just get out of here. You can't do that. If, if, they, if they don't know, that's not a good enough reason to. Yeah, you're, not, you're not worthy. Uh, uh, hey, the Madness, isn't that book that you were like reading yeah. and loving? Yes. He nice. did the fun series. Uh, Straczynski. Uh, Marvel Masterworks and Kenny X-Men Volume 16. All right. Chris Carmont looks like uh, some Mark Silvestri on here, too. Mm -hmm. and, Wonder uh, Man in his best costume. Look at that cover. That That's that's a that's a seller right there. Steam now. None of that cool. ugly, none of that green sweater vest or safari jacket stuff. Are you guys got any more apples? <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe some bricks. <laughs> some bricks. <laughs> With a note. That's, that's a good Wonder Man. That's a uh, good costume. IDW has a uh, Breen Moore. Oh, I mean, I mean Bryn Moore. Sorry. Bryn Bryn Moore. Moore. <laughs> Betty Page. La Dos. Betty uh, Page. Uh, how war begins dispatches from the Ukrainian vision. Oh, I don't. Wow. I pass. Anything hey, the mighty barbarians. Uh, by the way, that trade right there is 
If you like uh, Conan style stuff, the Mighty Barbarians is a fun one to check out. I was picking those issues up as they release. It's a it's a pretty fun story. Bunch of barbarians from different realms get they they form uh, like a team to create a dark you know to defeat a dark wizard and stop a world ruling plot. It's it's really fun. A man and his cat. What the hell? <laughs> this is the manga they're putting out today. Yay! Look, there's a bunch of different flavors of manga Ooh. out there. They can't all be One Piece, okay? Some people like the no, 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 they can't. I don't want them all to be One Piece. That'd be horrible. That would you think your manga yet? No, I, I'm reading. The, I'm reading the other one. Well, we got ten more, just the same length as uh, One Piece. Exactly. I, I'd quit. So the all man right. and the cat is a different flavor. If someone wants something a little more, more vanilla, they can have that. <laughs> a different flavor, man and the cat. Oh, it's a little tender, but we cook it a little longer. <laughs> All right, a man. Yeah, if you want a man and his cat, it's called the Book of Eli with Morgan, uh, not Morgan Freeman, but Denzel Washington in the beginning, eating the cat. <laughs> Different actor. <laughs> uh, uh, Street Fighters, man. Go, uh, Street Fight, Street Fighter, Governors, Line One, <laughs> Fight to Win, our cover. Uh, that's kind of cool. I always, I always, I always uh, dabble into the Street Fighter stuff. But in Veronica, decades in the 1970s. I wonder if this is a collection of old stuff, or is this them just new writers? Hopefully so I'm uh, just doing some reading here into that Wonder Man collection. You got some Peter David stuff. You got some Gary Conway, hmm. uh, Abnett and Lanning. Nice. You got some quality Wonder Man stories in here. And then we get the manga, and it gets kind of weird. I don't recognize any of these. The moon, I, on a, the moon on a rainy night, girl on girl action there. Yeah, and... they do that. That is true. How to build a dungeon, the book of the demon king. And the living dead, complete collection, limited hardcover. There you go. For all of you horror comic lovers. And then we get into uh, some more The Titan's Bride. I'm done. Get out of here. Let's yeah. Get, get what about here. Disney yeah. Masters, though? Is that uh, some old school Disney, though? We can see Disney, man. Oh, here. Right there. Yeah. 23. yeah, I'm just trying I'm to get the... Graphics. Just trying to get the other one off the screen because it's a, it's a little... Uh... We'll click on Disney Masters, then. <laughs> you like that word, don't you? Trying to get it off the screen. Well, then click the Disney book, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, you like that other word a lot. Santa. Put on the head, Catherine. <laughs> uh, Mickey Donald tackled their arch fellows. If he's, uh, yeah, this is a like, Roman uh, Romano uh, Scarpa collection. See, I another figured you another, would know more about another it. volume twenty-three. Well, I've been looking at these. They've been uh, releasing a lot of them. They uh, they had the Carl Barks version uh, of doing a lot of Disney stuff, and then they started uh, doing some other ones. This is an Italian art, uh, artist writer that took over. Mm. Pablo could tell you more about it. He probably has slideshows for it. Um, oh, I bet. Yeah, I mean, this seems like something that would be a Pablo or maybe Ease. Uh, uh, this, would, this would be more like a Pablo. Pablo, uh, our, 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 our friend, our friend Pablo, uh, who I basically like, would just do slideshows on the ground, Graphic Man channel. I, I feel like Marania may be on a, a time delay because I feel like I should have gotten tomatoes and bricks from her five minutes ago. He said, I, I, I said bricks or either war. I didn't say both. That's a kind of weird. I was talking. Well, I, I feel like that might be directed at me because of my Wonder Man costume comments. Of course. Yeah, he's the, the West Coast Avenger where he has the jetpack in the back. He's cool. Why would he need a jetpack? He turns into ionic energy. That's a later. I know. He gets better. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. I can cool. take it. I can take it. Thirty bucks, a hardcover, hundred ninety-two pages. These are, like I said, if you're looking for Mickey Mouse idea. stuff, these are the ones you can grab, and they're they're kind of huge, you know, books. Uh, they're worth it. But the problem is, though, they are, they only have so many stories in them. Mm -hmm. I would rather have a compendium than have six stories in this book, and that's it. You know, but that to say though, these are six stories, or, or at least three or four. What do they have in there? But they are long stories, though. So yeah. All right, all right. And 
we got that more more stuff. The dusk, which got comics. It's weird. Yeah, the further down we go, the less stuff I recognize. Shark princes, serpent sharks. All right, I, that's it for guys. Uh, Hailstorm off the van and their own comic book. That's just weird. But seeing more of these uh, band music artists are having their own comic books is really weird. Yeah. Uh, graphic now depicts the members of Hailstorm encountering a sinister doppelganger themselves within the decrypt, uh, uh, decrepit hell halls of Hyde Manor. Mirror reflections independently talk back and photographs transform into real sorted prophecies. In the band of slaves succumb to madness while recording a new album, Tail Creeks, with twists and doom filled revelations. Perfectly tied to Hailstorm's scorching discography. Uh, and the Winter Twins are uh, working on this. The Winter Twins? They look conjoined. Yeah, that's, 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 that's the first thing to you. I never know that. <laughs> <laughs> Two for the price of one. Just kidding. Um, <laughs> I don't know, man. Like I said, I, I, I'd, be, I'd be curious if, if we're going to have this in the record shop by Eric. Hmm. So, I don't know. But that is it for this week for comic books talk with Cold Dracula and Gary Gooberson. <laughs> yes. Oh, here, her, oh, YouTube. Uh, uh, what is it? They censored her previous comment with lots of tomatoes and bricks. <laughs> well, uh, By I, the way, um, no, we should no. point out we're a terrible comic book channel. We went almost. We went over an hour without recognizing that today is the birthday of one of the greatest comic book co uh, artists to ever have graced the page. Jose uh, Luis Garcia Lopez oh, nice. was born on March twenty sixth, in nineteen forty eight. Today, mm. so happy birthday to you, Mister Luis Garcia Lopez, and thank Man. you for all the. If only I could think of. Uh, if only I can think of five covers that he has, we could do a top five. Let's see, I'll, I'll over, nah, whatever he's, I can't pronounce it. Garcia Lopez. Yes. Uh, Z2 does good music comic books, says Undead Quinn. So, uh, looks like uh, then two years ago, these girls, they did uh, Joan Jett and the Black Hearts. Okay. Uh, did a, they went for that. And then, yeah, they're just, did, they're just in this new one. So. Yeah. But no, and they are not conjoined. They just they just post together. Yeah. And it, wow. Yeah. They wow. Wow. You look at the photos of them, Google them, bro. Don't Google them. Nerdy glasses, bro. Oh. <laughs> Resist. Uh, yes, yes. Uh yeah. Anyway. Uh, that's it for this week. If you guys saw anything that you guys liked, um, anything else you guys would want to talk about, let us know down below in the comment section. Uh, as far as that, and um, tomorrow again, round I uh, nine p.m. Eastern, we, we are reviewing our best of the week because okay, it's tomorrow. Okay, because tomorrow because I am not here on Thursday and Friday. I gotta help a friend move. Fun. Turns out I am moving a couch up a, up a flight of stairs. So we're back. Or, I, or I might just go and protest and just have it uh, in the in the garage. Say like it's a garage couch, bro. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so looking forward to uh, trying to recover. Um, Saturday there will be there will be some uh, readings, live readings. Friday night there are readings, but they uh, do not be fooled. They are pre-recorded. But don't pass them up because of that. They are fun comic books. We got an action comic book coming up as well: Superman versus uh, or Supergirl versus Superman imposter. And then I believe I can't remember what the other one was offhand, but um, yeah, it's a lot of fun stuff coming up. But um, yeah, and also uh, check out we're gonna have a Resident Alien review coming up on the channel, and also the next episode of X Men ninety seven. When do those drop? When do those come out? Wednesday mornings. Wednesday mornings? Okay. Yeah. So, so later on tonight then, I guess. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah, I saw the first two episodes. I really like the. Uh, I really like the first one. I think it was the first I one. I think they're Wednesday. I think they're Wednesday mornings, not Thursday yeah. mornings. Because because uh, that, that's the case. I mean, I would just bad batch it tonight. <laughs> I, I I don't know if I would bad batch it tonight, but I I would definitely watch it tomorrow if it came out tonight. I I enjoyed the first one. The second one was okay too. I didn't hate yeah. the second one. Um, I if still able, the art is watch, still really weird. I would say if you're able to watch it tonight, we'll record it tomorrow. Okay. And we'll if have I'm home, if I'm home in time, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. If you're home in time, um, then we'll have it up on Thursday. Okay. For people to watch, a little I behind the scenes there, how we do things. I mentioned how much it looked like Archer to my brother, who does not watch cartoons, and even he laughed because he was like, "It is, it looks like Archer." It's not even that; it looks more like Capcom. Capcom and Archer had a baby, and they got X Men ninety seven. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not freaking out over Gambit and the crop top. I'm freaking out happily that they have him cooking beignets the correct way. Cajun representation, baby. That's how. Yeah, yeah, that is true. People are complaining like, like, "Oh, look, he's gay. He's wearing a crop top." Um, Nope, no, buddy. Let me tell you, somebody who's lived in Louisiana, a lot of a lot of Cajun rednecks wear crop tops. Doesn't mean they're gay. Yeah, Rocky Three, man. Who do you think's Rocky Three? What was Carl it, Carl Weathers? Weathers? Yeah. 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 Yep. Yeah. So. Gambit. Gambit is still Wolverine's voice sounds off to me. It well, sounds it is, like, he is he is a sixty year old man from Ireland. True. Ireland. He's a sixty year old man trying to play an immortal <laughs> character. It's like you sound the same. And certain certain roles, certain parts he uh, lines he does sound like his original self. Yeah. Um, like I said, uh, the actor for Beast is the original actor. Beast is good. Rogue is good. Cyclops is good. I actually really like Cyclops. Cyclops is really good. And man, uh, Cyclops is a good leader. And yeah. without, ha- I mean, if, if they did, <laughs> I know it's MCU, but if we got the first half of MCU kind of commitments going into X Men, oh, it'd be, I, I, it'd be, I, I, it'd be I, a gold mine. I think Cyclops could be a really, really good guy. And like a really Cyclops, good I mean, they guy. gave him cooler action scenes in that one first episode than he's had in all of his movie appearances. Like I and said, he's been I in like, like five movies. I like having the original cast and that then putting Wolverine later in the movies coming in and coming. Like Wolverine in the original box thing, Wolverine should not have been in the first movie. He should have been like in the second movie coming in. Well, I mean, well, I mean, let's be honest. Those first three X Men movies, they weren't X Men. It was Wolverine, the Wolverine show, and Friends, right? Maybe <laughs> Professor X and Magneto were like right under him, but it was mainly the Hugh Jackman show. Well, it's called Wolverine and the X Men. That sounds like some puppeteer crap right there. <laughs> well, that was the cartoon. That was uh, the last X Men cartoon I, I they had was Wolverine and the X Men, which wasn't terrible. It, it wasn't uh, bad. But, no, but uh, but yeah, Cyclops. Cyclops. Sorry, Cyclops. Uh, the readings were called Cyclops. Uh, I, I like how um, him. I like how they had him use his blast to like repel him, like slide him across. Yeah, the and floor. people are pointing out, people are pointing out, it's for Cyclops. When has he ever been that cool in the comic books? Where he basically, oh yeah, the skydiving like, bit that was that was cool. The where, skydiving he, bit where he basically cool. shoots at the ground, pushes himself back, so yeah. you get hit. I don't remember ever reading that in in the comics. That, that may have been like I, I know it was definitely the coolest thing they've shown him doing on screen. Yeah. Like but. the one, that, the main, the main critique is that he got taken out by a guy because he couldn't open his eyes. He's blind. Yeah, the guy bit him out. It's like, yeah, man, we should go train with Daredevil. <laughs> <laughs> right, with the visor on, in case he actually opens his eyes, he gets hit. Yeah, yeah. So, but uh, yeah, I just. Man, if they can do this good animation, Marvel animation, I've never had a doubt with it. It's they've always been good. Except, for, I mean, the, I didn't watch the Moon Girl Devil Dinosaur. Didn't care. I haven't that. seen that one yet either. No, the one but, animation was was all right. It was good. Uh, it was good whether, enough. And I know you love Earth Mightiest Heroes when it comes to animation. I so do. So when you Adventure Symbols, you didn't care for the animation style. You like it didn't. To me, but, even even so, like I said I like both of those. There was nothing woke about them. They were yeah. you know, shoehorning stuff in there. And even Ultimate Spider-Man, as much as people don't like because they like Spectacular Spider-Man. Hey, I'm I'm 90 Spider-Man. I'm like, I don't care about any of these ones. <laughs> That's so fair. 
well, the hope is if they do well with like uh, X Men here, bring back the '90s Spider Man, give it a proper ending, bring back Mary Jane. Let's let's do this. Like you said, yeah. Well, but uh, anyway, it could be worse. Like uh, and the show does need more gambit and less uh, growth. Being like, hey, McDino, want to want to knock boots? You know what? Props to them for calling out the Rogue Magneto romance from back in the day that I would personally rather forget. But props to them for actually looking at the the, the canon, the lore. I'll, I'll give them credit for that. I will I'll say this, though. I think it's a bait and switch. Like We're going we're, we're gonna to think that they're going to be on the wrong thing, but it's actually not going to be the true at all. Probably. But, probably. Especially when Gambit gets upset, you know, because she yeah. does like Gambit. Here's what I want. I mean, and I understand that there's like a there there's you know the the old show did this where they would have guest spots on the different episodes. But honestly, are we saying you know there's there's been no Nightcrawler, no Colossus, no like where are they? Like you have Morph there. I feel like the reason they kept Morph, Morph on the team isn't so they can have non-binary representation. No. It's just so hey, if we need a certain X Men. Morph is gonna be our like Morph is the stand-in. He's just whoever we Morph, need him to be. Morph became Colossus in that first episode. Yeah, first he was Lady episode. Deathstrike. Then he was Colossus. Then he was also props to them for using the proper Psylocke, yes. not this the weird whatever they've done with yeah. her now. Yeah, but, yeah. So yeah, but, yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah. So, so like I'm said, with you, Ethereal. I hate that Disney canceled it. Also. I read the plans they had for season three. Season three was going to be amazing. They would have had Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch. It would have been Cap's Kooky Quartet. We almost had a West Coast Avengers. It was all going to be great. I'm they just stole say this. I'm, I'm sick of Scarlet Witch and Vision and Quicksilver and all that stuff. What have you read with those three characters in the last five years? I've been avoiding those books. I've been out for the past few years. There have been no books with the three, except for Steve Orlando, which I don't I know. That's what I mean. I don't count because it's Steve Orlando. But, but the MCU that, movies, I mean, MCU movies kept pushing them. I mean, Scarlet Witch and Vision are a couple. I mean, can't blame no. them for that. And Fox are there. My, my, ball, my, my big thing is there's not enough Quicksilver. That's my that's my issue. Not enough Quicksilver. Yeah. We need, we need to we need to have Quicksilver showed up and when they do the Fantastic Four and he basically Quicksilver's like yeah yeah your girlfriend's now mine, Johnny. <laughs> but, uh, Disney, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It, it's I heard I did hear though uh, through the grapevine. You can also go check if you want to check out Wes's channel over there with the and think of critical. Apparently the test screening for. Uh, Captain America 4, Brave New World, or whatever they're calling it now, uh, people are sick of the politics they put in there. It got bad reviews. People didn't like it. So maybe they will scrap it, and then maybe they'll just say, you know what? We'll bring back Steve. But uh, I doubt it, though. Um, even though Chris Evans said he would come back if they wanted him. You know, but uh, uh, apparently they're going with Captain Carter, though, as far as... Uh, there's a new, uh, is it part of the what if or is it secret evasion? Uh, what if Haley, Haley, Haley's what if. come back? Haley Alice come back to reprise her role as Captain Carter. Oh, in season two, either what if or, or it's going to be in uh, um, secret evasion. It's got to be season two for what if or, or whatever that secret wars, maybe. I don't know. Uh, could oh no, I could if, if they did secret wars, I could I could see that being the case if they did. If they did like, I like Haley Otto as Pig Carter. I just don't like her as being Captain Carter with, with, with the shield and all that stuff. As long That's, as I'm not hiding her face. No. Don't promote my video on Thinking Critical or anything, Bankman. Well, oh, yours yeah, is that's true. right. You're, isn't yours talking about how everything sucks? <laughs> is that your name of your video? What's it called? Uh, no, but go check out go check out Thinking Critical's uh, channel in general. He's got a lot of yeah. cool there. He does uh, some pretty cool videos. Yes, all right. Every Fish now and then he has Fish green animals. Animals. And Pretty yes, good. he just did a new video that was uploaded on the channel today. Probably one of 12, knowing Wes. I was to say, my phone <laughs> buzzes several times a day. Thinking but, critical. Uh, but, uh, like, okay. <laughs> Breen, was, Breen was on one today. He somehow managed to get on there. I don't know what's going on. They just, like, once a week, you're like, I got a quota. We need a Breen for this video. 
He hasn't had, I mean, he hasn't had Breen on his channel and I feel like it's been several months. Breen tells you that Breen tells the other night, he's like, Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna uh I'm gonna do a new video. I'm like, oh, what are you talking about? Oh, he's 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 doing Wes's thing. I was like, Oh, I thought we we're getting a Breen video on his Breen's YouTube channel. I was so excited. <laughs> That would be uh, wild if Breen does his. Does he even do videos on his channel anymore? He used to do tw- once every six months. Do you know what would have been better, though, than doing Falcon to Snowman? Just doing Captain American Falcon. Captain that would have been great. Yeah. Okay, now he's bragging. I was on the Fish Channel two weeks ago. He was. That's true. I remember. I've, never, I've never been on the Fish Channel, Breen. Never. Never, yeah, not once. That's, that's I think Wes point. has responded to one of my tweets, not about being on the aficionados, but that's just how small yeah. I am. It's like uh, he's only responded. But to I do, one I do, them. I do appreciate that he does give us shoutouts on his channel, and uh, does that's, he? Why, I, that's why I mentioned his channel too. Oh, okay. not that he needs it though. Like I said, we're we're like a drop in the bucket. We're we're not even we're not even there. We we're like we don't exist. But um, and thank you for posting him, Ronnie. Just post it. Uh, and here, so uh, I'll show months you before, so the previous go to this, go to this link up on the channel here for those watching the replay. If you actually did make it this far, I, I'm a shocked because most of you guys click off in 30 seconds <laughs> at replays. <laughs> we see, but, you. Uh, but uh, yeah, go check it out. No, uh, uh, anyway, though, like the falcon and the snowman, we're out of here. That's right, but I get to be the snowman. I had to think about who the snowman was for a second. It's like, it's obviously not Falcon. <laughs> well, wait, wait, oh, wait, wait. Oh my gosh. Did you just say that you're, you're, you're obviously not Falcon? Cause. You don't Why would be? I be the Falcon? Cause you don't want to be. I <laughs> listen. The Falcon is played by a guy from my hometown. I would love to be the Falcon. If people wouldn't say I was appropriating their culture for wanting to be. We'll Even though you want it. Anthony it, Mackie is more my culture than anyone else, let will say that because we're from the same town. <laughs> I'm sure you are, Brain. No, okay. So speaking of Anthony Mackie, though, there is this funny video I saw. It was one of like the few things I saw this morning when I got on Twitter. Don't get on Twitter first thing in the morning, by the way. Terrible thing to do. But there was this funny video. There was this college girl doing like one of these. TikTok videos talking about how she saw Anthony Mackie at a gas station in New Orleans with his window rolled because he lives there. So he's at a gas station, his windows are rolled down, he's smoking a cigar. So she walks over to him to like talk to him, and Anthony Mackie just like puts his hand up and he's just like, No. <laughs> because like he, he it's been documented, he does not like to be approached out in public. And so he's just like tells like and this girl is like freaking out. She's like, I can't believe he did this to me. I was like, you went up to him. <laughs> what were you? What were you expecting? Oh. Um, Ethereal Dragon wants to know: Are you running Marvel superheroes then? What the RPG? I guess. I guess that's what you're. No, I'm about. not. P- uh, Professor Pixel is. Pixel is really. Yeah, I, on Wednesdays. Is he really? Yeah. I didn't think he had time. I thought Publix it's, was it's, running him all over the rating. Week. We're doing it. We're doing it offline. Oh, okay. Well, it's good to know he's still got those uh, those videos. Uh, and we're, u- we're using canon characters. We're not using OC characters whatsoever. You're not doing OCs anymore? Nope. That might be smart. So, yeah. We're using the using the newer book, the newer version. Mm-hmm. So. Anyway, but uh, I'm not in charge of that. As I said, that's Professor Pixel. But, um, uh, yeah. We will see you guys tomorrow. After we read our books and tell you what we thought of them, I'm really hoping that Ghostbusters book is good. Dear God, even if it sucks, I'm gonna buy because it it's Ghostbusters, man. This <laughs> 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 is five is, years. Vinkman's like, I've been waiting so long. Please just let it be better than Ghostbusters 2016. I just be good. Like that's all I'm asking for. Like I said. There's I so have a feeling can... the art may leave you wanting in a big way. The art wanting may be... The, wanting for what? Is it worse than Rosmo or wanting? I think it might be worse than Rosmo. Putting a proton pack up this mm. Yeah. Maybe, anyway, yeah, I don't know. Have a good night, guys. And as always, 
leave a like, subscribe, and go to the Ko-Fi link. But also those you're here on a weekly basis, you can just do that through Super Chats too. You know, we can leave us. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. 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 But thank you all for showing up. See you tomorrow night. Happy New Comic Day, y'all. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern. Later. <laughs>